and welcome back to Mads Little Monsters. So this is gonna be potentially the weirdest, but at the same time the funnest video I have ever made. I hope I can have more fun eventually. So I tried to watch five minute crafts. I'll admit it, yes, I am a garbage human being for that. In the end, figured out that five minute crafts, polymer clay hacks aren't really that hacky. They're kind of just basic stuff. So when I was looking up weird techniques that I've been wanting to try, because I've been doing makumagane for a bit now, like I want something a bit more fun, I ended up on Pinterest. So I decided that I'm gonna use some scrap clay. We're gonna try some of these techniques and hopefully one thing looks pretty. I've only been at polymer clay for about two and a half years now. I don't know how any of this is going to work. I have followed these people. I've just never like picked out these techniques and actually tried them for myself. So let's just see how this all goes. I need to get my laptop so I can actually watch these techniques. Hang on. Okay, so I'm going to be looking at our techniques right here on my laptop and we're going to be trying to show them over here if I can. So this first one is, I saw it on Ray Plus Clay. It's an easy way to cut out leaves. You, it, it just looks like you roll out your like leaf colored clay uh, to what seemingly looks like a kind of thin uh, on the thin side and you just take your blade and you go in like a double helix shape and when you peel it off just you just get perfect leaves. I, I don't make leaves a lot. I do have leaf cutters but this gets like way more leaves done at once so I hope this works. Base we're gonna put the leaves on and we're just going to Okay, that's one way, and then we go back the, uh, okay. So my clay wasn't like a hundred percent condition, but... It could also be the fact that this, this clay, uh, is multiple shades, kind of, uh, Smushed together. Don't think I'm gonna be getting a lot of leaves out of this, but it is seemingly working so far. I definitely got more leaves faster, but yeah, it does seemingly get you leaves. It was faster. I could see if you wanted um, a more organic shape, then yeah, this would totally work. But um, if you were going for uniformity, Definitely not the way to go. Hack number two. This is kind of one of those that like really inspired this video. And it is from Novel or Novel Petals. It says create texture on polymer clay by layering two stencils. And it's using those kind of stencils, like cake decorating stencils or scrapbooking stencils that I have. Um, let, let's see what this happened. You really just put it through the machine and it looks like she has it sandwiched between two stencils and that's about it. You get, you get like the design of both stencils somehow. I don't fully understand this one. So we're, I, I, I guess we're just gonna see how this is or are they the same stencil? I don't fully understand this one, um, but yeah, we're gonna see if this works. <laughs> okay, for hack number two, I don't have the exact stencil she used, but I grabbed two so we could actually see um, the effects here. I'm a little concerned. Yeah, this is what I was slightly worried about. These aren't gonna fit in my pasta machine either way. So I think we're gonna have to roll these by hand. How she shows it as she rolls it through the pasta machine with one stencil on the back and one in the front. Um, but I'm just not super hopeful on this. Okay, so that stencil did seem to work. 
Okay, I mean, that did work, but the way... I'm gonna try something different here. Hang on. I'm starting to think I didn't do something right, or I didn't look at something right. Okay, so yeah, watching it again, I'm wondering if her stencils um, are maybe not her own stencils, and she's, like, um, promoting them as a set, but yeah, it is actually of layering two stencils, like this, <laughs> and um, putting them through the pasta machine. I just don't... really see this working all that well. Yeah, the this is only for specialty stencils that are meant to go together because alone, this just looks kind of stupid. Um, I'm not even going to bother cutting this one out because it just doesn't work. Um, so yeah, let's move on to hack number three and we're still going to be using that clay, I guess. The third technique is another one of those that I was really excited about doing um, because of these like southwestern kind of motifs and this is a technique I've been wanting to do with polymer clay because you can commonly do it with plaster or ceramics but the fact that this might work for polymer clay is awesome. It's how to make terrazzo chips or ter terrazzo, I don't really know how to pronounce it but it's pretty pretty simple from my understanding. I just don't know how if I'm gonna do this right. You set your clay machine to the thinnest setting, roll out your kind of accent colors, you bake it five degrees warmer for five minutes only. I That's the part I'm unsure about. And it just breaks into these super thin uh, tests, like chips that you can just crumble in your hands. And that's how you get terrazzo chips and you lay it in the molds with liquid clay. This is one I hope works, but I'm honestly, it's the one I'm the most unsure about, especially with those baking directions. But we might just have to see. We'll see how it works. And here it is, the final thinness, the like minimum, the maximum thinness at a nine. This is super, super thin. This is insanely thin. And I'm gonna do it again for this blue. All right, here is the other blue laid out to our <laughs> thinnest thickness. That is really hard to say. Um, there's some other shades of blue and like white in here, but that's not much of a problem. I'm just really, really nervous about actually baking these. Um, I'm a little nervous. I'm gonna have to bake these separately. I don't have the proper materials, but I wanna see if I can do this without the normal materials. I think I can if I just DIY a little bit. These are from Polina Creations, where this video is from. It is foil crackle earrings. These are really, really pretty. So she takes black clay, uses a uh, leaf metal or like foils. I'm gonna be using um, just my nail foil foils. You roll it out so it crackles and you add these splotches of alcohol ink so it will like turn the foil metal different colors and it just looks absolutely insane. It looks so pretty. I really hope this works. I am going to be using uh, alcohol markers for this. I don't think coloring on top of the foil is going to work. What I'm thinking I'm going to have to do is kind of scribble in a plastic uh, palette. I forgot the word palette for a second. I think I'm going to have to scribble in that and then add rubbing alcohol for it to work, but we are going to try. I want this to work because I could see some really pretty designs with this technique. I'm going to try my best and get it as flat as I possibly can. But this foil, it being in like chunks, is going to be a little bit tricky. All right, I think that's as good as coverage as I'm going to get right now. Or honestly, it's as much coverage as I'm willing to do. Because I'm not going to sit here and cover this entire thing. <laughs> but um, these like extra bits will just like... I think it worked. I think we have alcohol ink. Um, I didn't think of this through. Let's swatch it though. Let's... Oh my god, that is like, okay, that kind of turned neon pink, but, um, that worked. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just fill, like, one of these wells with alcohol, plain alcohol to, um, rinse the brush, I guess. Okay, this is attempt number two of me trying this. I blotted it and, like, it, like, all came off except for, like, one patch of blue. So, I'm going one color at a time now in a fresh well 
with darker colors. And I'm thinking this should work this time. If I dab quickly, I am getting some mixing of the colors, but not a whole lot. Okay, this is the green I switched to. This is actually a five below alcohol marker, but this is also the darkest green I had. Yeah, it seems like green just doesn't really like this one, or maybe just my greens aren't potent enough. Maybe my greens aren't dark enough for this. So that's all the green, but um, this is the blue. I went with my most um, obnoxiously bright blue and my boldest blue. That just looks like a ink pen exploded. Oh, that is so blue. That is, oh my God, blue. And the purple is hopefully gonna be just as vibrant. Um, I do wanna save room for the purple though. Um, just like a little, little bit of blue over here to cover up the blue staining. Um, yeah, the purple is whew, a lot as well. This is so pretty. Oh my God, I hit the mic. But just, oh my God, this is gorgeous. So um, yeah, this technique does seem to work. It does take just a little bit more um, work compared to using alcohol inks. I'm surprised that this whole trick of using alcohol markers honestly worked at all. We're gonna do one more and this is another one that I am really, really curious about. And it is this kind of ceramic tile trend that's been going around. Now, um, you're supposed to do this with other kind of things. Um, I think it's another one of those things you need alcohol ink, but once again, I'm gonna try to use rubbing alcohol and my alcohol markers to see. So from my understanding, you get like a plain color of clay. A lot of people use white. You stamp this pretty intricate design into it, get your cutter, and then you actually tint your liquid clay. I don't think you bake it any differently. I know some people use like a heat gun, but I don't think you have to. You just brush it all over. You really don't wanna like glob it on. Uh, it's kind of um, almost glazing it in a way, and it just looks amazing. I really hope this works. I really wanna try this. Okay, so we're on to our little um, ceramic hack. So this is clay, I rolled out to a four, and I went into my stamps and I have these two. They are very dirty, because I have stamped with them with alcohol markers quite a few times. Uh, let's just stamp both of these into the clay, the way I can pick which one I want. <laughs> raspberries or rose? I think I want raspberries, okay. So let's roll this back down and get stamping in the raspberries. There seems right. And I really want to engrave these with um, a dark red in the liquid clay. Those look so pretty. Oh, I guess I should probably cut out the circles too while I'm at it, huh? <laughs> okay, so we are finally back with everything being baked, everything being done, and we can finally talk about these results. Also, sorry if my light's flickering, my ring light is deciding to just not like me. I got one segment of it flickering. I'm really sorry about that. Yeah, let's talk about these hacks. So as we know, the stencil one did not work. Uh, in trying to look up more videos, yeah, it turns out it's not really a hack. It is people just promoting their own stencils that they have made. But clay leaves turned out pretty good. I probably would use that hack again looks pretty cute. The little earrings I made are super cute. I'm actually kind of excited to see what's fully done. Um, let's actually take a look at the, okay, let's talk about the terrazzo ones before I actually show them. So I, ha I have no idea how much footage I actually have of this stuff, and I don't know how much I'm leaving in, but the supposed bake five minutes higher and five minutes only, it doesn't work. Um, these were baked at 280 for about um, 15, 20 minutes. The blue leftovers from my fruit cocktail earrings, it doesn't do that at all. This just springs back to life. 
So I had to end up, I was ending up having to rip and tear at this stuff. And it's, um, still pretty cute. Um, I wouldn't call this like perfect though. Um, I thought about trying to sand these. I thought about it. Ended up deciding not to because, well, you guys should see the, um, raw results of it all. Um, I would say that, um, this one does look a bit cooler compared to the other one. I forget. Um, this one, I put in a bunch of pieces and then poured in the liquid clay and then made sure to push them all down. This one, um, I purposely did clay on the top and the bottom only. Um, yeah, it didn't quite work out. Okay, um, let's move on to the attempt at the crackle foil clay um yeah unfortunately i couldn't get this one to work either as you can see my foil is just silver it's very hard to show these on camera yeah but they're they're all silver any color from my alcohol marker ink it it went to the clay not to the foil so i don't know if that was my foil was the issue or the fact that I was just using alcohol markers and rubbing alcohol. I don't know. Um, but I do wish that it at least stuck a little bit. I'm wondering if it might be my foil because it stuck to the clay. And I have done the trick of like dotting alcohol markers on translucent clay. Uh, you can do the same thing with alcohol ink to color translucent clay. And that works great for me. Uh, that's how I got my rainbow silver stained glass earrings. And that works just fine. That works great. So I'm thinking it was something up with my foil. The other reason I'm pretty sure it was my foil causing the issues is how the uh, mosaic ceramic earrings turned out. I was super unsure about these because I thought I put too much or not enough. I wasn't sure how much was the right amount. And I've seen a lot of people actually use like heat guns with this. So baking it, I was super, super nervous. I was also a bit nervous because of... Um, I was using that same method of scribble in the ink pot, add the liquid clay, and then add just a tiny, a tiny bit of rubbing alcohol to get it to like mix up. These are my favorite. These are stunning. These are absolutely gorgeous. It worked great. And you can really get the raspberry vibe. Uh, the studs, however, were a bit of an issue. Just a little too much on the studs. Um, just a little bit too much. One turned out great. Um, like this one, you can actually see the whole blueberry stem and all that. This one, just a little too much liquid clay. Just a little too much. Still cute. But would I try polymer clay things again like this? Yeah, because I have a Pinterest board of, um, a few more. There's a few more I really want to do. There's some weird techniques I found. There's even one I found today where, like, my siblings, like, you have, you have to try that. Like, it's, it's a cool technique. I want you to try this, so I am. I'm gonna try it. Um, there, there are definitely more I want to try out, so there's definitely gonna be more parts to this. Um, but as for the ones, I would say definitely, definitely try. Definitely try out the ceramic effect one. If you have the right stuff, I could see the crackle one looking cool. Um, I could see it uh, having fun with translucent clay underneath it instead of like a normal clay. Uh, I could see that maybe being neat. Definitely the leaf one, uh, especially so much pressure to have simple leaf cutters. If you want like a more organic vibe of different shaped leaves, give this one a shot. And um, the terrazzo one, honestly, unless you have super brittle clay, don't bother. I'm curious how these look, um, sanded and maybe cleaned up a little bit, but, um, I don't think that's honestly going to happen, especially with this piece where they're exposed. So I'm probably not going to bother, honestly, <laughs> and definitely don't try the stencil one. It is just, it's stupid. Um, but yeah, the ceramic one, definitely my favorite. That is it for trying Pinterest polymer clay hacks techniques, tips. I don't really know what I'm going to call this video in the end, but that is it for this, I guess. <laughs> Consider subscribing to the channel. If you have seen any other weird polymer clay techniques such as these, or if you just see something that's like, could that even work with polymer clay? Um, I am open to being some messages 
of being sent techniques or anything, or if there's a creator um, and then has maybe done something weird, weird with clay, I, I'm, I'm willing to give it a shot. Um, I'm not the best with this stuff, but I can, I can try. <laughs> The link to my Etsy shop is down below in the description as well. By the time this video has gone live, I will have already launched my spring collection, which are absolutely adorable. Like my favorite earrings I have made to date. I absolutely love these. In addition to two new art prints, which I'm also really excited about. One featuring my monsters and one was actually from my um, previously scrapped first run stories. It's the Do You Suppose She's a Wildflower? from Alice in Wonderland, and I absolutely love that print, so I hope you guys do as well. But without further ado, I will see you next time. Bye-bye!